line, we welcome you and appreciate you taking the time to join us. Hallelujah. And worshiping the Lord, we believe that something happens in the earth every time we worship the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And we want to keep it going. For the word of God said it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. Come on, somebody. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I'm glad to be here. Glad to see you here. I hope that you're ready to bring it to the next level. We, we, we were talking about it on a Friday night that when every time we come to worship, it should not be mundane and, and uh, ordinary. And what it should drive us to an uncomfortable place. You, you should worship until you feel uncomfortable. You know, and then you are breaking into new ground. If you're going to always to that same comfortable level, you'll never grow in your worship and your fellowship and your communion with the Lord. So we encourage you to push. Hello, somebody. We know the times are hard and persons and things around us oftentimes used by Satan is really designed to keep us on the low. Hello, somebody. But you got to push beyond those feelings. Shake them out because I tell you, you don't know how much your worship can do until you do it. Come on, somebody. When you worship God, come on. You know what I'm talking about. When you worship God, something happens even in the atmosphere. I've been into places where there's no worship and it was like you're stepping into a kitchen with no ventilation. The place was just hot and the air was so still and the place felt miserable and dark. And the moment we start to worship in there, the place felt light. It even felt like breeze was blowing in there. Come on. It's awesome when you worship God. I'm telling you. And I'm encouraging those, especially at home, who might feel pristine by the circumstances around you. I want you to know, just join us in worship and watch what God will do in the room that you're in right now. You will sense the shift and the change because when he manifests his presence in the room, nothing stays the same. Come on, somebody. And that's why we hear worshiping him. The word of David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Sometimes we can forget them because of the things that are rising around us. We don't remember how those benefits are there for us, but we have to claim them. Amen. It's good to know they're there, but the greater thing is to claim the benefit that is there. Because if you don't claim it after a while, you'll forget it is there. And you'll start to live like you don't have it. Hallelujah. And that's what the devil wants. But when you praise God, something is happening. Come on, somebody. God is returning it around for your good. And I don't care, even those who are watching, oh, the devil might be reminding you of things you did yesterday or even since morning that, will, that he wants to push in your face and say, you can't worship God, but shake that feeling off and know that God still wants your worship. Everything that breathe and move must give God worship. Hello, somebody. Come on, give God the praise right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you for a new day. Thank you, Lord, because you didn't have to give us this day. It's a gift to us. Hallelujah, to have another day. There are many who would plead and beg and do anything to exchange seats with us to have another day. Hallelujah, in this land, to, to uh, this land of repentance and change and transformation. But God, they are excluded from having any further opportunity. But we are here, glory to God, to make this count and to make it count for ages in one that will bring glory and praise to you. And so we pray, Lord, that you just baptize us afresh in your anointing this morning. Let every fear, every doubt be expelled from us right now in the name of Jesus. Every low feeling, every bad feeling, every spirit of depression and oppression and, and every spirit of stress and anxiety and fear we cast them out now in the name of Jesus we pray that the blood of Jesus will be sprinkled all over us this 
morning and over this place and all over those who are watching and connecting with us that they will sense a shift in the atmosphere right now as you step in the room let your glory be felt Lord let your kingdom come and your will be done expel every spirit of darkness everything that's been lurking hiding tormenting flirting overthrow them now and cause them to melt by the heat of your flames of your fire you're a consuming fire let your glory be felt in the house glory to God and let everything that have breath praise your God let praises rise in the earth hallelujah for he said praise the Lord all ye people and let the earth yield forth its increase hallelujah as the praise go up the hurt is being healed of all the trauma and all the issues that have been played upon it by God because you said that all earth and all creation is waiting eagerly for the manifestation of the sons of God and he said for this reason Christ was manifest to destroy the works of the devil and we declare that the works of the devil are destroyed even now in the name of Jesus your kingdom reign and your kingdom is an eternal kingdom your kingdom is unshakable immovable hallelujah incorruptible and we give you praise for the glory that is coming now Lord God upon your people for though the outward man perish the inward man is being renewed from glory to glory right now your angels with flaming sword have been assigned around us as a wall of fire Lord against every spirit that is not of you to overthrow them and evict them from this place let your word saturate the atmosphere let your worship fill our hearts and fill our mouths and our youth is renewed like the eagle cause us to move from strength to strength from faith to faith and from glory to glory in the name of Jesus let souls be saved, bodies be healed, minds be renewed, spirit man be built up in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Cause us to advance in new territories today. That doors be open in uncommon places. Opportunities and promotion, provision, distinction upon your people. Grace and more grace. As we give you the praise and all the glory. Come on, give it to him right now. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Come on, bless him in the house. Mm, are you ready to praise him in here? Come on, put your hands together as the praise and worship team comes. Lead you to worship. Come on. Sit the atmosphere. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
rejoice in the Lord for those that know their God rejoice in him because we know he's our deliverer he's our savior he's the one that keeps us from day to day he has preserved us to be here this morning and we give him high praise hallelujah do you believe in him this morning hallelujah. i believe and when you believe hallelujah. you have confidence amen praise god hallelujah so we're gonna just rejoice in the lord this morning
that empowers us day after day. All we have to do is call upon His name. Amen.
rising in your spirit. Though the outward man perish, the inward man is being renewed. It's being renewed. The devil has rained on your parent. But you need to look the devil in square in the eye and tell him. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. In your name I come to declare your victory. Resurrected the resurrected king. And it's soaking your spirit. Shut your out is your doubt and your fear. 
I got no time for doubt and fear when resurrection is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can God do it? Is it too late? Oh my God. I've never heard anyone come to Jesus and ask him for a miracle. Ask him for healing or for deliverance. And he said no. Check your Bible, Lord. The resurrected king. some people with faith here in this place but yeah, you may be seated thank you all for coming I, I might just keep you standing on service and praise God but I love the Lord you might know that already if you don't know you will soon know praise God but the resurrected king is resurrecting me, he's working in me to do and to perform his good will and pleasure. Hello, somebody. And I'm telling you, ah, Jesus, hallelujah, there's so much joy in the room. I don't hear you in the room. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I still see seats in here in case there's anybody outside that need to sit inside. I still see seats in here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Follow my leadership. I'm the leader here. Praise God. Hallelujah. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hallelujah. That God is working. We know that God is working, and there's a need for people to be ministered to, especially in these times. Uh, the, the world might not consider this work necessary, so they said they authorize those to do the work that are necessary workers. <laughs> necessary. They said this is not necessary. So they don't authorize us to be necessary. But they weren't the one who authorized us in the first place. Hallelujah. It was not a command for men that call us to this work. And it can't be the command of men that stop it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said the command of men can't stop it. Still they don't listen to me. Praise God. And it's not that we don't respect men and their authority. But he said, let every power be subjected to the higher power. Not you. There is a higher power. Yeah, man, there is a higher power. That's why the Hebrew boys refuse to bow. It's not disobedient, they're just disobedient to government. But there is a higher power. That's right, there's a higher power. We, we always have to make even the government understand there is a higher power. And sometimes it takes us to make a stand for them to remember there is a higher power. Hallelujah, the world can't make them forget it, you know. The church can't make them forget it and then wonder why they're treating them so. You get what I'm saying? Right, because if, if the Hebrew boys had bowed that day, they would have a lot of bowing coming afterwards. And a lot more would have to bow to. Not sure. So the, their stance of putting their life in danger stops something from happening. Okay. Let's see, that's why the church don't want the church trying to protect their skin. Hallelujah. But you see, being faithful to the spirit is not about skin. It's more about purpose. You're looking at what needs to be done. There's a need. I said there's a need. You know that if someone's house is on fire and you are going over into that house to put it out, you are not authorized to do that. You know that? Okay, some know, some don't know. That is for the firemen. 
was what they're saying you can actually cause it to burn more because of your lack of knowledge and you are not trained for it you have to handle it because it can be a fire that water help it to spread more ah, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, praise God so they have training for it not true right but God use some people that are untrained oh Jesus I said God use people that are what untrained to, to do some work eh? to do some work and you got to understand when God use them huh it's not God didn't call men together to ask them if they agree oh, okay 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 you see by all right by the law of the land lepers are not supposed to come amongst the people so if the people stone a leper to death who come in their presence they would not be charged because they be seen as protecting themselves because leprosy was highly contagious and it was something that spread as a disease and they had no cure for it come on now but the Lord say heal a leper cleanse the leper did he say that no you know sound like he said that they wonder so he been saying a short here. praise God but he said cleanse the leper Come on now. And, and he, he remember four lepers who got some miracles. Who when Israel was under siege, they were by the gates. And they found that if they stayed at the gate, they would die. But if they went down to the camp of the, who was it, the Samaritans or Assyrians. And uh, he went down to their camp, then maybe they might give them something to eat. So he says, why do we sit here? Why do we what? See, no, 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 no. Too much people sitting at their home. If you stay at home, the bill still a pile up. <laughs> Tana your yard. If you stay, <laughs> and the government ten thousand, I think it one time last year can last you. So you better hear what I'm telling you. It's, it's, and it's true, so you know, so it's true too. Right, so if you just stay home, turn your yard. Right. The bills don't pay, and if the bills don't pay, JPS won't be saying because of COVID, we excuse you. Because now they can't turn it off from them at JPS. They don't even come in your yard. They put some new meter now that they can just flip, and it's shut down. to this clinic again oh Jesus so so if you are going to say just tell me yard because you know I don't catch COVID do you know that more people more people died of violence than COVID I have a police officer here that can confirm she knows records and that you know that I, I know that there are persons must be here that is in the medical field and know that more persons die of cancer than COVID of cancer and we don't hear a lot of for cancer we don't hear a your yard now someone will say well because it's not contagious that's true see because that. but people who didn't have it in their in their history are now contracting it so it means that there's something in the air that is used with a true perfume spray toxic things that come from the exhaust of motor vehicles and equipment and burning of rubber all those things in we still don't hear stay your yard you can't come out and catch cancer. Eh? Huh? Especially food. Praise God. Thank you. Forget to wonder around this. <laughs> Praise God. So, 
especially food and food. So, there are things there that making people catch it that they usually, when you usually you see have cancer, you usually have it somebody in your family line. And they say it come through genes. But they can't say that again. Because even children, eight year old showing up with bone chance and bone breaking all places. A girl was here, one of the Henry's daughter was here, fell down off a staircase. My big testament to the other day. I still tell you. Amen. But but fell off a staircase at her school. It's just at the school compound and running down the stairs with her kids and fell. And she broke, I think it's either eight or ten places they can currently in her to know how oh, could she fall and so much places in her bone be broken and a fall and it's not like falling you know so much stories of a building down to the ground it's just on a staircase so when they did their test they realized that she had bone cancer wasn't eating nothing was staying down drying down high fever, all kind of things going on in her body. And um, the mother was here just melting under tears and came to the altar and told me what happened to her daughter and told me that they were prepared now to give her radiation and chemotherapy to give her three months, eight years old. Now many of you don't know nothing about chemotherapy might just think, oh, it's just chemotherapy. It's just some treatment they give. But let anybody who get chemotherapy and radiation therapy tell you that it is like their body is set on fire. And after they have done it, their body is weak. And after they have done it, their peers and their skin that is burnt from it. Years of their skin that is burned, no son. Okay. That they have to use, like you actually burn from fire. You have to get treatment with ointments and medications and pills. And hair fall out. And come on. Imagine several sessions of that. It's not one. Some doing 25, some doing 30. Some doing 50. Come on. And no one wants to talk about the power in the name of Jesus. When we talk about the power in the name of Jesus, they say we, we are foolish. We are unlearned, we are untaught. But God used the simple things. The foolish things of the world to confound them they say are not noble not educated not well learned God will use them to do some things that they will say look at what the Lord anybody know what I'm talking about and so while she was crying and praying right here and was prepping now to go back to her daughter that's talent she was telling me she had not her daughter had not eaten for how long and nothing seemed to be staying down and she's not responding well and they have to put on her treatment now and she wanted me to pray before she go I say I'm praying and, and I pray your daughter is going to be eating when she will go up and she's going to be well and do you believe me and she doubted please praise God but I say alright go and tell us what you find and uh, I tell you you can't believe it's the same mother come back she was leaping and jumping and looking like a teenager. Hallelujah. Looking like a teenager that just passed the common entrance. My God, bright and skippy. And come on now. They won't say common entrance now, but it was a baby. Praise God. Common entrance was my time. Pepper for them to But um, but when the doctors checked, they checked and found that there was no trace of cancer in her body. 
So, so what did the doctor say? To God be the glory, great things he has done. No, the doctor says, seem like we misdiagnosed her. <laughs> he still can't explain how so much of our bones are broken and now it's healing, but, but uh, she don't seem to have um, bone cancer anymore. She never had it then. She never had it. It was a misdiagnosis. I like those kind of misdiagnosis. Because when they tell me they miss, I know I say something now. Because if, I'm, if they really ever need a target, they'll beat me dead. <laughs> if their target was reached. Come on now. Mm. But fear give you a different results. I don't hear anybody in here, but I, uh, you have to excuse me. I'm a crazy faith kind of person. I, I just simply take what the word of God says here, so you know. and I don't need to go all over the world and study all kind of world book and check all kind of records to see if it is real and I don't need to make no trip to Israel to look at Jesus tomb to know he's alive and he's not in the grave right? I don't need to go here to baptize Jesus Jesus I don't I don't need to do no world travel to believe the word because I found that the word is working in my life right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And God is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a, he's a wonder. He's a wonder. He's a miracle working God. And I, I, I love to work with God. What do you say? I find that when I work with him, some supernatural things happen that make people say, look like I never saw. You know, we have a sister here that was dead and came back to life. And 11 years, this year now is what? 12 years. 12 years this year. 11 years this year. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we thank God that when we check the record, when we check the record and look at it, we know that the, the, the five, it don't take five doctors. It don't take what? Five doctors to pronounce one person dead. Just one, not two. And when five can be, four can be assisting one till that person die and then they say, why well, there is nothing more we don't know. We know say, that person then was dead. Uh, they have dead they have dead 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 and they have stiff torn dead and they have stiff torn dead 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 she was past that one because there was no blood in her body and machine failed everything they know that no all vitals gone it's done it's over she bled out after having her child from a c-section and they tried all they did and co-workers don't donated 23 units of blood from co-workers from lime and all of that just passed her body would not stay her health was not attained and she lost her life boom and i seen her spirit in the church was given a word from the lord concerning her i didn't know how it would work at first because when i got the word i, I know that that word i got was telling me there's victory but I didn't know if the picture meant that she was just with the Lord, that her soul is safe, or that she's coming back in the body. Because either way, it would still be victory once she's in the Lord. You see what I'm talking about? So I, I wasn't clear what the victory meant when I saw that. And I was praying to God and asking God, what does that mean? And he, he just reminded me of the word I got that it's already done. The victory is one and I, and I said all right it's done then so when I went home and heard the news that she's still dead it didn't agree with the word I already believe and receive so I said oh, then what is that because you told me it's already so oh no I go home now hearing the report don't change and uh, I, I called 
the husband to speak to him to find out what happened and he was crying and telling me about to tell me the news and from i heard his voice i knew that it was confirmation to the news hallelujah and i just said all right uh, after the lord just said to me it's you who have to do it it's you have to do i gave you the word for you to do it it's not just because i said it's done it's done because i gave you the word for it to be done you get the one so people don't understand this raising up dead is not just you just get up and us raise dead you have to get a word to raise dead because god is the one who have the keys to death and to oh come on and he he can open it and he can close it he can bring one here and he can bring back one here and he can come on now hold one over there but he have the last say you understand anything and all we have to do is agree with him we're not here to debate with him to refute what he's saying and to try bend his arm to get him to do what we want to be done we are we say not our will but your will be done and that 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 testimony echoed hello somebody echoed through the atmosphere for 11 years lord jesus for 11 years and uh, my god and many people who heard the testimony hopped on to that faith and even their child that died came back to life and praise god because they believe and the lord always showed me that you see when people don't believe it's harder to reach and to manifest power in their midst because they are not mixing the word with faith therefore they are pretty much treating the word of god as a lie and it's hard for you to treat the word of god as a lie and get anything from it because it says then you are treating god as a liar and it's one thing that god cannot do it's not that he will not do may not do he is something he cannot do it's impossible for him to do but it's impossible for him to lie because his words have creative power his words have what creative so if you look on this white wall and say it is red it's going to turn red because his words have creative power to change the makeup of the color of the paint into red his words have creative power to bring light out of darkness to draw dry land out of the sea come on somebody to part the seas that Moses and the children of Israel could walk by on dry land hello somebody and the sea stood up as heaps for them to cross over come on somebody sea stood up as a wall and there's nothing retaining it that's the word you know so when we say we doubt it we're actually saying it's a lie why should we believe it come on somebody well, God's word is powerful hello it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two edged sword and it works to the body the soul and the spirit it cuts through every ear of your being if you look at how it says it says it pierces even to the it, it pierces even to the dividing of soul and spirit come on soul and spirit come on now and it goes to what joints and marrow that's your flesh and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart that's the mind it touched every area of your being so the word doesn't just minister to your soul look at it hebrews 4 verse 12 the word doesn't just minister to your soul so many people say we well, come and get a little word yes but we have to go treat your body and we have to go educate your mind and and so they said this is not really major you get the cloud like this in nice still in needed yes but no things out there with this candle for you but you need to know that it's the word set the atmosphere and the platform for you to prosper and to maintain prospering lord jesus that's why god said jesus says you don't live by bread alone 
Matthew 4 verse 4 says, But you live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. So it says, this word is not just something that persons calling it to nowadays religion. Go get some religion. Uh -uh, the word is not religion. It's not religion make the world. It's not religion that made the heavens and the earth. Oh, Jesus. Come on now. But Hebrews 11 verse 3 says it is by the word of God that they were framed and they were made. Come on now. By the word of God what? He says by faith we understand that the worlds, you see that? Not world, but worlds, the spiritual and the physical. Because there is a spiritual world. But he says, all of them were framed, designed, structured, and made, created by the word of God. It's not by religion. Come on now. It's by the word of God. And he says, so that the things which are seen, the things in the physical realm, Things which are seen were not made of things which were visible. They were not made of things that were physical. They were made from spiritual things that brought things into the physical. It is always the spiritual that bring the physical into being. The physical did not come into being of itself. Lord Jesus. Hello somebody. That's why as long as the body is without the spirit, it dead. Correct? And when the body is without the spirit and it dead, it can't have no children. Because it needs a spirit to perform. Lord Jesus. Come on now. That's what James said. James says, as the body without the spirit is, James 2, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Come on, somebody. So we got to understand then, if he says, as the body without the spirit is dead, he's saying that the body is dead without the spirit. The body is dead without the this body has no life without spirit so the only reason your body have life is because you in it oh Jesus uh, you is not your body but you live in a body hallelujah you dwell in that body but when you depart from that body that body starts to decay Hallelujah. It has no life in it once the spirit is gone. Correct? Praise God. So we, we bring it to an understanding that you are a spirit being. Lord Jesus. So God made spiritual beings to dwell into a physical world in a physical body. So even when he was coming here to interact with that physical being, he himself had to put on a physical body. Come on, somebody. So that's why he says, a body you have prepared for me. Huh? A body you have prepared. Behold, it is written in the law, a body you have prepared for me. And he says, here I am ready to fulfill the word. Come on, somebody ready to fulfill, to bring into manifestation your purpose and your divine will. Come on, somebody. Because man in that body was not performing according to God's will. And God didn't make man to perform the way he was performing. Man had got corrupted by sin and been now under the influence of the devil and his evil influence and schemes. And God wanted to redeem man. But also to redeem a kingdom that he had given to man. That had fallen into the hands of Satan. 
Glory to God. So it was not just man that was lost. A kingdom was lost. Come on now. It's not just lost humanity. A kingdom was lost. Praise God. And we find in Genesis 1 verse 26 declaring the boundaries of the kingdom given to the man. Genesis 1 verse 26 declared when God made man, he made man with that heavenly assignment upon him. <laughs> that a kingdom is given to him. You understand that? God said let us make man. Let us what? Make man in our image and according to our likeness. Now some people believe the image and the likeness is about their flesh but he got nothing to do with your flesh. It has to do with your position and your being. It has to do with your position and your being. The position that man held in the earth was like God in the heaven. The position that man held in the earth was like what? Who? God in the heaven it means that every being into heaven is subjected to God. Hallelujah. And God put this being in the earth like him. That every being in the earth would be subjected to him. Right. Glory to God. That's why it says in his image yes. and in his likeness. Glory to God. This had nothing to do with the flesh since God is not flesh and blood. But God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth come on somebody so it's a kingdom that was lost because when adam lost this it fell into the hand of satan a romans romans what romans 6 hallelujah romans 6 verse 16 praise god Romans 6 verse 16 Paul says do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey who you present yourselves what slaves to obey you are that one slave whom you obey whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to right so so who did Adam obey that brought him into sin Satan. Who would Adam need to obey to bring him in righteousness? God. You see, his masters he's talking about. Who you submit to determine your state and the, the state of what is given to you. Watch the thing. Who you submit to. Hallelujah. Determine your state and the state of what is that's a deep one. You have need to sit down and write that in a diary and reflect on it till something pop up to you and start to correct some things because the devil need to come down. The devil's kingdom need to come down out of your life and you need to exercise some godly authority and reverse some things in your life. Hello, somebody. You hearing that? So it says, you, whether of sin leading to death, you know, being Satan, he, uh, he went into sin and he says the sting of death is sin. But he says, in obeying God, he had righteousness or right standing with God. Come on, somebody. But being now in sin, he did not have right standing. Glory to God. He was now out of his position. And Satan, the usurper, was now in his position. Lord Jesus. And what was entrusted to him was now in Satan's position. Hallelujah. So man that was made like God in the earth. Lord Jesus became a different being through corruption and through sin. Lost his position to a fallen angel. Not even an angel that was serving God. Not even an angel of light, but an angel of darkness who had fell, plunged into darkness. And apart from that, there were 
principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness below him because a third of the angels fell with him. And below those principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness, there were demons and man fell even below them. Ah, Jesus. Now, how low can you go? Low, low, low. Come on. So when you see the word saying that we see Jesus being made lower than the angels, it's because of how far man had fallen in her and being made in the likeness of men now. Not in the likeness that men had originally been in the image of God, but in this fallen state. My God. Because this was surely not the image of God that man had taken on now. <laughs> Come on now. His whole image had been twisted. His whole character had been marred. His thoughts, come on, have degraded to a low level of reasoning. Come on now. And the Lord saying that he's calling us out of that. Into this new life in Christ Jesus. Hello. So Satan now coming like he's the God of this world. As Second Corinthians four, verse two to four, no sir. Hallelujah. He's posing now like he's the God of this world. Say, we have renounced the hidden things of shame. We who are the children of God, we renounce them. We who are born again, he says, we renounce those hidden things. Not walking in craftiness, not handling what. The word of God deceitfully because there are people who are handling the word of God deceitfully. That are using the word of God to entrap more people in sin and to tell them, say, God understand. Tell them that God loved them in his sins so they don't have to change. Just try and God will give you points for effort. So they have not truly repented. Come on now. But it's, so he says, we are not handling the word of God with craftiness and deceitfully. You see it? But by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to what? Every man's conscience in the sight of God. Come on, he says, in other words, the message is not just in word, but it is in deed. In other words, they can study not just what is being taught, but they can study the messenger and find the connection and the depth of that message. Come on, somebody. He says, but if our gospel is veiled, Paul says, if it's hidden, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Those who are lost and going to be more lost. Whose mind the what? The God of this age has what? Blinded their minds. Now the God of this age is not God. As you see, come on G-O-D. He's talking about someone who took that position. That position was really meant to be man position. The God of this age was really to be man. Because God made him in his image and in his likeness to operate like him in the earth. But now Satan took advantage of him and now standing in his position, ruling man, ruling the hearts of men to keep in their hearts and mind blocked from the word of God that brings them into the true position, identity and power in Christ Jesus. Hello. So he says, who do not believe because their minds have been blinded. They do not believe what? Our gospel. That's what he's talking about. Our gospel. Mm -hmm. Their mind is blind to it. They don't believe it. Let's the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on him. So, in other words, God is not trying to restore the image of man.
to man. <laughs> Lord Jesus. I, I want to watch that one, God. Hello? I, I want you to notice that Christ is the image of God. And it's Christ we preach to you. Hallelujah. And preaching that to you will cause you to be conformed to his image. Glory to God. But the devil knows if you don't get that word of light and that word of life, you will not be in his image. For God is light and in him. There is no darkness at all. So the, the, the world tainted by Satan and fallen angel of darkness has caused darkness to flood the hearts of men. To flood their minds and their eyes. And it says the eyes is the window to the soul. And if the eyes are dark, then the whole body is dark. And he said if the light in you is darkness, then oh, dark is the darkness. Come on. But if you turn to the light, come on now. We're going to have fellowship with you in the light. Not true. So we have to understand there's a life in this. Come on, somebody. I said there's a life in this that we don't have in this flesh, but we have in Christ. So we can't look for that life in the flesh. That's why Paul was saying, we have renounced the hidden things. We have renounced the hidden things of shame. Now, there's a time we used to boast in works in the flesh. Talk to me now. I'm all who boasts who, how much man they can have. How much woman they can have. Hello. How much money they can have. How much house they can have? How much car? Come on, now, how much degrees? All this boasting in the flesh don't save your soul. Come on now. But he said, We have renounced the hidden things. Talk to me, somebody. We have renounced them. Come on, somebody. We, we turn our backs on them, we look at them with scorn now. We don't look on them with pride anymore. Who can dress the sexiest? Who is the hottest on the black? Because we know God's have a hot place for the hottest one them. Hallelujah. So there was a time we would boast in those things, didn't it? There's a time we would boast in it, true? The time we, 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 we in our hearts we feel shame, but when you buck up your friend, and me, yeah, come on now. But your conscience would tell you, uh uh, that wasn't good at all. Friends may high five you, give you all a big up on the stripes, but you know, in the sight of God, it is not right. Come on, somebody, and the word of God declare it. Come on in Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21. What those works are. And what that those works produce is that it causes you to be excluded from the kingdom of God. Hello. Everybody is fighting for the kingdom of men. But the kingdom of men is fading. All who have the empire. Hey, about the empire. Uh, who say they are of Gaza who is of Gully wait they know can't find the Gully and you know part to find the Gaza all the, the, the nice little making about it where is the empire it fall not true and fall miserably because the Lord wants you to know that boasting in the flesh don't stand in his kingdom because flesh is temporary Hallelujah, but spirit is eternal. Hello, somebody. And he wants to get some spirit into that flesh that will cause you to experience a new life that the flesh couldn't give you. 
Hello, somebody. And that's the life the flesh was giving us, you know. Look at the works of the flesh. Look at the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Come on. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who what practice such things huh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. That's the that's the, the boasting in the flesh. That's what the boasting in the flesh bring. Come on. And who they bleach out and who they tone up and who they tight up. Tune up and perk up. That won't save you. It's good to look good and to keep your body looking good and nice. But all the nice you make that body look. And it's still mingling in sin. A hell going to pick you up. You are heading for the fire. My God, my God, my God. Come on, somebody. With all the naughty Nola. With all the groom, eyebrow, and cutie lip. Battleship. Oh, Jesus. All the curves and turns. They go down to hell. And me out of shape, they go ahead. Because you are more mindful of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, man, if I'm mindful of the flesh, I can have some of the curves too. Yes, man. And I have all the tones and the sharp and the buff and the puff. But that won't give me permit. My God. That won't excuse me from hell. Come on, somebody. And so we're not telling people to give up on those things, but we're telling them say there is something more important that the devil will blind your mind to. And have you just go from this style to that style to that style, and I'll know your spoil. Because you are not lining up with the king. You're not lining up with the king. They can't think of you the hottest girl on the block. But if you die tonight, where your soul will be? The whole town can be praising you. The whole town can be saying, yes, you are the in thing. You are the trailblazer. You are the talk of the town. Hello, somebody. But where is your soul heading? Hallelujah. All the beer, the fancy clothes you wear. Come on, somebody. All the dining and whining. And all the luxury parties. And all the big friends just stand around and say, yes. Good for the camera. Hallelujah. But where is your soul heading? Where is your soul heading? I say, where is your soul heading? I said, where is your soul hidden? Somebody need to talk to you about your soul. Every time they want to talk about the money, about the clothes, about the things, about the sex, about the drink, about the wine and dine. But where is your soul hidden? My God. When you lie down in the bed and all the noise around you, quiet down. Do you feel the peace of God in your soul? That if you close those eyes and don't wake up on this side, you are in good stead with the Lord. Or are you just fooling yourself? Hoping that he'll overlook your discretion and your falsehood and pretension say he's alright. But God is not partial. And I tell you what others not seen, he's seen. Hear what others not hearing, he's hearing. He's hearing even your very thoughts. Mm. And you can go and fake it to make it. 
But God is looking for people who are real. People who are true. People who know say, if it's not God, I'm not going to make it. And I'm going to give him all. Because anybody out there want to look and say me look like this or me look like that or they, like this about me or that about me. If it had not been, I wouldn't be here. So I got to honor the king. What you say? What you say? What you say? I got to honor the king. So who don't like it, bite it. Hallelujah. Make them send me to go to church too often. Let them send me to read Bible too often. Let them send me pray too often. Let them send me use God, God too much. Let them send me more holier than thou. But as for me, my God, my God, my God, my God, because the door we really narrow. Not so. And enough the fight and fall on the wayside. I don't make it. But I make up my mind. My God, if I'm me alone, I'm me alone. I don't need the crowd to make this trip. Because anyone come and anyone go. My mind is fixed. We need people who heart fixed on the Lord. Too much church people heart fixed on the flesh. My God, they know to tone up, they know to clear up, they know to touch out spot, they know to put in curve, they know to put in dimple, pan wrinkle. Hallelujah. But they don't attend to their soul. They know the latest year style and they know the latest this and that and perfume on the block. But in their heart is stink. In their heart is stink. It smells sweet on the, on the outside. But God is smelling deeper than that. God is smelling deeper than that. And you don't want to have an offensive smell before God. If you want to attract his favor. Glory to God. You have to get down on your knees. Humble yourself. Humble don't seem so popular nowadays because of people who boast and look for the highlight they draw a crowd. So when you humble yourself and say it's God, they say you're fool, fool. You're not going to make it in this life. Yeah. You're going to miss too much opportunity for your life. I go hard and some really try to make it hard for you when you're living godly because the word of God said those live godly will suffer persecution. No, so. And it says man the more you press away from them in certain things that they will do, they will suffer will mock and jeer you and try to do all kind of things to bring you back in the mess but you must make up your mind yes, I don't hear anybody in this place but I say you must make some come here desperately seeking for God and after they knock with some friend in the house them forget what they come about hello they get distracted some come in and had a passion for God to move heaven and house and building out of this place and now you can barely get them to raise a finger hello because they lock with arms with some friend and forget what they coming about but me no say they coming here nobody wasn't in here my God and me still was praising here till people come and they wonder then who are you they praise then who are they praise one are you one in here my God because I see God I am lifted up on his chain fill the temple I see God in this thing and when I worship God no idol not coming out of the way I will shake her up mama see too no no hinder me from serve my God because I know where he took me from I know I don't forget some things that people do will creep upon you to make you forget where you're coming from to make you so mindful of where you are now you forget where they come from come on but it's good to keep a reminder of where you're coming from so you will not get too heady and high minded and forget what the goodness of the Lord hello somebody so pride no get a hole of you and drag you down in the pit hello somebody you have to stay steady before the Lord come on somebody 
And you're going to lose the kingdom. God has prepared a kingdom for you. It's not the kingdom of men. It's the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God. The kingdom of men failing. All they're trying to do to ruin this world, the world will get worse. But those who are looking to God, the word of God said they are like Abraham who's looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. Hello, somebody. They forget those cities they left and come from because if they were mindful of where they came from, they would have reason to return. But they were looking steadfastly. They got to reach to that place. It was John who said, I saw that city coming down. Coming down upon the earth. Come on. Coming down. He said it has 12 gates. It was beautifully made and crafted by God. It's not cement and black and stone God used and built it. He used gems and sapphire and onyx. Hallelujah. And my God, all kind of precious stone of jasper. That's just what's on the walls. And the street is not tar and asphalt. My God is paved with gold. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the fruits, trees in that city bear fruit all year round. Glory to God. There's a river flowing in that city. That makes glad the people of that city. So you can stay here getting busy and fighting and killing people of a black and stone that by melt and tear down. Because God said one black now left upon the other. Hello, somebody. But there's a city coming. Hello, somebody. Not no wrong with getting your house. Not no wrong with getting your car and getting your business prospering. But you need to keep your focus. And the Lord and no say it's him you're serving in all of this. If it not glorifying him, leave it alone. And you have to prepare to leave some friends. Prepare for leave some people. Some people you can't carry the way you're going because they're always heading in an opposite direction. Every time you move so and you feel glad, them pull you back. Every time you humble yourself, them puff you up. Anytime you have peace with God, they come disturb your spirit. And at a certain point, you, you, you're not having nothing violent in your heart nor wicked against him. But at a certain point, you have to distance them. Just high and by. I don't hate you, but God bless you. Because you can't keep that tug of war going on. You can't keep that to the wall. Room for rent. Mm. And you can know it. You can know them. Because as soon as you make a breakthrough with the Lord and start to feel sweet in the Lord, them start to act up. When you slug full in the Lord, they and them are right. But anytime you start to make some groaning of the Lord, all of a sudden, they start to have a problem with you. Come on, somebody. But you who know the Lord must be steadfast, unmovable. Why you say somebody? Because you know where the Lord take you from. Somebody don't want to tell them where the Lord take you from. You need to look them in your face and tell them, say, me you know, you may me tell about the Lord take me from. I was at the bridge of madness. I was heading down for the garbage pan. Garbage went smell better than me. But the Lord take me and clean me up. Wash me off. Take the stain off. The shame off. Shame was so heavy. And one time I couldn't hold up my head. Every time they have their say hold up my head. Shame was so heavy. But God give me a new name. God rewrite my life. And you can't get between me and my God. And 
anybody, anybody, anybody. Make them jealous over God. Make them vex over God. But don't make God vex because of them. You have a kingdom to obtain. You have a kingdom to reclaim. God call you for this. And you can't make brother or sister, mother or daughter, husband or wife, get in your way. Come on, somebody. Do what you can do. Hate them or you can't hate them, but keep your eyes. I sure am. I say who we're talking to. I say keep your eyes. I say keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Hello, somebody. Get back on your knees. When you can't find the time to go on your knees, whisper a prayer inside. When you can't say it, oh Lord, vomit in your spirit. But you must keep, 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 keep on the fire line. You can't back down and make the devil come catch up to you and bring up. Bring her back in the shame. I know you're sitting looking at yourself. Disgusted with yourself. I say I couldn't meet this. Who me in a beer, sir? Who me in a beer, sir? You never been in that yet. You have to stand up and look yourself in the mirror. I say, who me in a beer, sir? Come here and me to do this. I know. I spoke about this. I would never do this. Then hold me in a piece. Come on, somebody. It's a war. I say it's a war. Satan not playing. And no sorry for nobody. Your tears won't make him back off of you. Your groaning and sign won't make him give you a break. He's coming for the kill. He's coming to destroy you. So even if you have to cry, cry your cry. But wipe your eye. Square your shoulder. Hold your head up. And step in Jesus' name. Hello, somebody. And do what God call you for do. And stop the listen to who they so so. And who not so so. And set your mind. Hey, somebody. Set your heart. Upon the Lord. God didn't even bring you and they can't put you out of this. You need to hear what the Lord is saying to you. You need to get focused. Somebody need to refocus. Hallelujah. Before you got married, before you have the children, before you have the car, before you have the house, you had a focus. Do you still have it now? I have those things watered you down. I make you lose your passion and your drive. Now you're on the back seat. Now you have your things them well set. You're ready for retire. My God, we have been called for a kingdom. And it's not the kingdom of men. It's the kingdom of God. It's an eternal kingdom. It's an immovable kingdom. It's an unshakable kingdom. It's a kingdom of righteousness. It's a kingdom of peace. A kingdom of joy in the Holy Ghost. A kingdom of the Holy Spirit. And those who are led by the Holy Spirit are going to abide in this kingdom. Yeah. Come on. Because God says he's going to remove from his kingdom all things that offend. Yeah. Glory to God. Come on. That's Matthew 13 verse 24. He removed from his kingdom all things that offend. Come on. And those who practice lawlessness. Those who practice what? Lawlessness. So it's verse 41. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those who practice lawlessness. He wants you to come into the fullness of the truth. Come on somebody. And you can't haggle about this and treat this thing like religion. Religion will not save you. It is God who save you. Come on. And you got to put God above everything else. Lord Jesus. I say you have to put God above everything else. Some of you know the struggle you've been through. You know the dark hour you were in. You know how it was seeming like the night never the end. 
You know, beg for the day and for the light. And when the light, you know, beg for it to get dark again. Because you're, you're going through a pain period that you want to be over. You're going through a shame and a struggle that you want to be over. You want to be past your body just hanging over you like a cloud. Sitting on your life. When the Lord come and take you out of that. You know, if you go back to it, no man, nobody persuade you and pretty it up and sugar coat you and tell you, say, it's all right, God now nah go so hard by you because you're being good. You better hold your foot. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. And the devil, the tempt you and they put things before you. Look the other way. If you're drying on certain things, turn your foot the other way. But don't go down that line and say, Already God knows, God is kind, God is merciful. Because there's a day I've cut off. And you don't know when it's coming. When enough is enough. Come on, somebody. For years I've been telling some people things and they've been hearing it but they still been doing what they feel like though. Because they're operating by their own thoughts. What they feel to do. They're going to do it. And if they feel, say it's alright, it's alright. When I make no pastor tell me if you live my life. I'm going to do what I do and God alright is what I do as long as me no sin. But the word of God says anything that is not a faith is sin. And it says how does faith come to you? Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. And it says how are you going to hear without a preacher? Is the word come to expose the errors that the enemy have access to your life and lock it down? If you don't listen to the word and keep applying the word you will become unprepared come on now the enemy come up but you're not prepared and the enemy not going wait come up to you and wait for you to prepare yourself wait on me look at that let me put on my armor let me put up my sword the enemy is not looking for that in fact he is taking it as a pleasure to come and find you unprepared come on and the word of God is preparing you. Every time the word of God is watching you, you don't know what is coming off, you know. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you, you can't even tell what happened, but you just know you feel different. When you come and hear the word, you just know say, you feel new inside and fresh inside. Your eyes seem clearer, your ears seem hearing clearer, your mind seem clearer. Because the word of God says you are washed by the word. And you don't know oftentimes what's coming off when you're being washed with the word. You can't pinpoint everything that's washing off when you're washing. Come on, somebody. But the washing helps to keep some things off that if it pile up. It's harder to come off, not true. Because when you're getting regularly washed, you have less washing to do. Not true. But when you get washed once in a while, you're going to take more scrubbing. Lord Jesus. Or oh, some don't get the power blade. Uh -huh. And this, when you have to get scrubbing every time you come for beard, you don't want to beard again. Because you find bathing an uncomfortable experience. Oh God, when I look up at my mother, so be me. He said, turn up, why? Come like they were washing us to make with skin change complexion. And rub your dung if you touch your skin so you feel sensitive. You get a good rub down. I'll be in your ears. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nothing can left after that. But you fear the next one coming. Hallelujah. Come on. But if you're doing it regularly, then there's less of that rubbing to do, not true. And that's what some people find, that's why some people stay away from church, you know. 
Because when they come, they get so hard rubbing. But the rubbing of your heart when you stay for a long time. Ah, oh, Jesus. See the nose, though. See the nose, there. See there. Hallelujah. When you stay for a long time, we have to rub you more. Because more things have been added. And then you don't look upon the others, what they are saying. Oh, you not rub them so hard, and they rub me so. Like I'm the only one rubbed them so. But because you have some stain in the dirt for you. <laughs> for your dirt when you sit on a long time. So it now go easily come off. Come on now. More strength of you apply. Come on now. And you know those moments when the Holy Spirit give a word that seems like God's finger is pointing in your face. And warning you and tells a shape up otherwise something to come. And if you keep ignoring it, my God, everybody is might sorry for you when it comes. But you in your heart know the Lord when they warn you a long time, not true. And so many people get the warnings and ignore it. And then when things happen, they go on like say everybody must serve for them and but the punishment and say, oh, oh, we, we, we know you feel. But my mother tell you, say, Go down here. Uh, you, you, you know one? Oh, you know me? Oh, you know, you know one completed one. Uh, you know one the butcher part. All right, stay there. Hallelujah. But you got to understand. You got to understand that there is a warning. God don't speak to us just for speaking to us. He speak to us because he have something to say. And then if you know that that's how God speak as a God of purpose that want to speak things into your life to shift you into a new plane and into a position that you can maximize the things he has for you. Do it rough sometime you will say yes Lord. Put it on me rough when you need to. Because I want to make it. What you say? But if you start to brace half who they wash you you understand it? You're going to miss some spot and some spot are going to give you trouble later. Lord Jesus. When if you understand what I'm saying? So, so that's why the word of God said, don't despise the chastening. Whoa, my God, my God. The chastening of the Lord, he says, you don't despise the days of chastening because he said, it don't feel comfortable here. No. But he said, it produced the fruit what you say? Of righteousness, no sir. So you got to know, say, when you decide to serve the Lord, come on, somebody. Hello, serve him. Serve him. Go through the embarrassment. Go through the persecution. Go through the hard time. Go through the bad face. Go through the talk about. Go through the slander. Go through the gossip. What you say? Anything you must go through, go through it. And don't make nothing stop you from accessing what God has for you, what you say. Because many are backing off to their own ear. The devil has persuaded them. They don't love you. <laughs> no love, no united church. Lord have mercy. If I tell you the amount of time I hear that, what we know say I devil let talk to them. Because Christ is still the head of the church. And he had for the head there and no love no there. Hallelujah. So it means that somebody's looking in the wrong source. <laughs> Somebody drawing from the wrong source, man. You ever been in a room? You ever been in a room apart? Everybody in there hate you. Oh, you don't know their money. You know the money. The Mickey can tell you. Been in situation I read in the workplace, but I don't say. Nobody in a room don't want me there. <laughs> you know that, that kind of hatred. Thick. 
and you can cut it with a knife if knife so sharp. Hello. When you come, you can sense the shift in the atmosphere and the change of countenance. When you step in the room and the tone where the voice them shifting, you know, say, mm hmm, I told me come. And when you're gone, when you say they're gone, everybody started to pick up. Hey, 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 hey. So you, you take the clue, not true. But all when I work in place where everybody they hate me, me still do good work, you know. Because I know I have one to answer to. Come on, somebody. And some things you have to walk out because some people will hear some things about you and believe it, you know. But when they see all your work, they say, eh, eh, I never saw you go. You can persuade people to think differently when they see your lifestyle. How you walk it out. How you didn't act up and blast out and get out of here just but you keep your cool and keep your head and behave yourself in the sight of God. What you say? Then your testimony will cause the naysayers to have to change them out about you. What you say, somebody? Hello! Come on. So, me love you walk it out. And certain times, uh, I believe me, when I, when I went, I didn't feel like going there. And I didn't feel like staying there. But God said, come on, you can run from the fire. You've been anointed for this. You've been anointed for this. When God anoints you, he don't anoint you for you to feel good. He anoints you for trouble. For you to come out victorious. Hello, somebody. Come on now. When they anointing a wrestler, they're not anointing him like a beauty pageant. He's been anointed because in going into a wrestling match. And he wants when him enemy and the opponent hold him, he can slip out of the lock. No, so. So in a anoint like a beauty pageant, he make cat walk. No, in the go for fight. So that's why I'm anointed. Hello, somebody. So you are anointed to fight. What you say? And if you're too weary for the fight, you're telling the opponent, saying win. And so that's why the Lord said, don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season, tell somebody there's a due season. In due season, you will reap you're going to reap your good reward if you fear not. Come on. And others have to say, well, yes. I know people usually say, me I worse this, me I worse that. We know see what they come out of my life. I know they appreciate me. And I say, boy, I respect you. You're doing good. Come on, somebody. See a mouth turn now and give him praises. See a mouth that used to curse. Come on. But if you walk the thing through, Tell somebody, walk the thing through, man. God anoint you to walk it through. God anoint you for victory. God anoint you for blessing. God anoint you to win. God anoint you to be the head. And not the tail, to be above. And not beneath, to go over. And not under, to be more than a conqueror. To be a victor, not a victim. Hello, somebody, to be strong and not to be weak. To win. And not to lose. Come on, somebody. And you got to stick with the plan, man. Stick with the master's plan. And he will bring you in the fullness of what he has prepared for you. What you say? Come on, give God the praise in here. Stand on your feet. We're going to worship him in the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What is a person? Can't play now. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We know that God has called us to the kingdom of God for a, a time like this. And those who love the Lord must understand not everybody loves the Lord. And some who don't love the Lord now don't mean that they won't love the Lord later. But you have to be focused on what you are doing. 
be true to God be true to others and be true to yourself love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength come on somebody and God will deliver you out of them all come on lift those hands and give him the glory come on give him the glory my God let the praise of God let the praise of God feel you right now feel you right now oh Jesus oh Jesus praise come on praise him right now glory to God glory to God thank you Jesus you are awesome Lord you are worthy of the praise come on just worship him right now mm. Mm. come on come on he's in your midst right now the king of glory the great I am the I am that I am El Shaddai the many breasted one Adonai Robo Shamase hey hallelujah you are the word I am we worship you we adore you we magnify you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus raise up that praise to him come on open up your mouth and worship God don't just stand there as an observer come on engage God my God my God my God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord God thank you Lord God mm. oh Jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Father thank you Lord do you want to worship him Is he your all? Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus.
man. I said, glorify your name, Lord. Glorify your Glorify your name and all this Lord. Lead 
your light so shine before them that it will cease all the voices that are speaking in their heads that this is not real for this is real you are a real God wanting to have a real relationship with your real people and we come to you we lay it all at your feet you say have your own way Lord. you know what is best for us you know the path that we take you know the struggles and the issues that we have to face but you are more than enough <laughs> You are more than enough, God. There is nothing too hard for you, God. So we cast our crown at your feet. We humble ourselves before you. And say the great shepherd lead us as a shepherd lead his flock into green pastures. By the still waters restore our soul. Anoint our head with fresh oil, cause our cups to overflow this morning. Hallelujah. Grant us a fresh anointing that whatever the enemy has planned for us, <laughs> we will come out victorious. <laughs> and your name shall be glorified. in the room I believe that God is releasing fresh anointing upon his people right now lift those hands right where you are right now and believe the word of God for it is quick and powerful sharper than any two edged sword ha 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 glory to God Going between soul and spirit. Haha. <laughs> is Yoko Shemasata. Between the bone and the marrow. Hallelujah. Yoko Shemase. Between the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Shemase. No hiding place down here, devil. Because God has given us power over all your wicked schemes and devices we render them powerless in the name of Jesus we command them to fail in Jesus name we drive them back to the pit of hell from where they come Messiah, in the name of Jesus, we raise up a standard against the enemy right now. In Jesus' name, we push them back. We push them back. We push them back. We push them back. No evil shall come nigh our dwelling. 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 All with our eyes shall we see and behold the reward 
of the wicked. Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. For he has taken our part. He has exalted our head above the heads of our enemies. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Victory is ours in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody claim it right now. Yes, right now. It don't matter how you feel. It don't matter how it look. Power is available now. I say power, power, power. I say power, I say power. I say power. It's not man power, it's God power. Power. Yes! I say power is released over you and your whole soul. Power! Power of God! Yes, Lord! Hallelujah! What shift must shift, what move must move, what break must break, what must dead must dead, what must live must live. But God must get the glory. Mm-hmm. God must get the glory. God must get the glory. I say God must get the glory. Devil won't win this one. He won't win none of them. Because we are victorious in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I see things falling away right now. Oh, gosh, oh, mercy. Grace is being released. The power of God is working in your boat to will and to do his good pleasure the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church he's still the head of the church victory still belongs to the lord his reign is an eternal reign the scepter of his kingdom is not broken it will not break and go into the hand of someone else he is king forever forever and ever and we are joined ears with him come on somebody give him the praise right now somebody who got the victory give him the glory give the wind a mighty voice let the devil know that you know that you know that you know it's already done it's already won it's already won. Glory to God. And you are here to receive the benefits. To receive it in Jesus' name. By faith. I command that mountain to be removed. Ah, be removed and be cast into the midst of the sea hallelujah we are going across on a plain land in the name of jesus in the name of jesus rough places become smooth crooked places become straight in jesus name light shine in darkness the darkness cannot comprehend it praise god kingdom of God is manifesting on your behalf be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might praise God give him a praise one more time in the house <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord may be seated for a few minutes we're going to release you shortly I want to give you a chance to sow hallelujah and then release you, put up your hands and envelopes will be given to you. Praise God. That's how we do it here. Praise God. We like to do things decent and in order. 
Praise God. Those who are watching online, you're watching Increasing Faith, I-N-T-L.org. That's Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministry International. Our website is Increasing Faith, I-N-T-L.org. You can check us out there and see what it's about. The information is on the screen. Follow through, you will realize that we are authentic with the word of God and with the life that God has called us to live in Christ is being demonstrated here and the power of God is manifesting more and more in our lives and we want to be partakers of it. And if you're already in it, we want it to grow even more and bear more fruit because the Lord said even those that bear fruit, he will prune them that they will bear much more fruit. Praise God. And we want it to bear more. Praise God. Together we accomplish more. Praise God. So if you want to know more about us, check us out, out on our website, increasingfaithintl.org. And you look on the page mark about us. Hallelujah. And you'll see things about the ministry of vision statement, mission statement, and the goals long term and short term we hope to accomplish with the help and grace of God. We pray that as if God laid anything in our heart to connect with us, to make these things be a reality, we want it to run with us and let us together accomplish the work of the Lord because it is what the Lord said must be done. Hallelujah. And his will must be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Praise God. And so we want to be moving, advancing the kingdom of God and accomplishing more. Together we can do more. So if you have any prayer requests, write them in the comment box. And we will connect with you to believe God with you that they will manifest and we believe you see greater results. Also, if you have any praise report of how this ministry been blessing you, we want to hear from you. We rejoice to hear it. So write it in the comment box so we can follow through and rejoice with those who rejoice and be encouraging our spirit as we encourage others with the testimonies of how God has healed, delivered, and set free. We believe more will be done as we continue. As you continue in the word, the word of power and faith will transform your life into the very image of God. Praise God. And God will be glorified in you and through you. Praise God. Hallelujah. If God lay in your spirit to sow to this ministry, you can sow through our website. This is a good ground to sow. Many people are saying that online, but those who have sown here have proven it. And so we know that truth always stands on its own. It will prove itself. So you can prove, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. And we want you to connect with us and see what God will want you to do further in moving forward in faith and build up your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Uh, we ready now? Everybody ready to give now? Praise God. Everybody got the envelopes? Praise God. Praise God. Lift those hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Those online, just lift your hands to the Lord. Praise God. How many believing for a miracle? Oh, I don't sound like much believing here. How many believing for a miracle? Hallelujah. Yeah, it sound like some people here now. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, no, you got to exercise faith. Faith always requires a response. So when I say and ask you twice, it's not because I want to repeat yourself for, for a cheering team. It requires a response. Praise God. And faith always have a response. Faith without response is dead. Hallelujah. It must have a response. And so when you respond, you're showing works with faith. Hallelujah. That will connect with the word of God and produce fruit for you in Jesus' name. Lift those hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every lack and drought, every spirit that the updates that the enemy is casting upon their people, restricting their finances or income. We come against it now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ against every spirit of poverty, every spirit of debt, every spirit, oh God, of bad credit and bad debts and all kind of financial issues and blockages and disappointments and railroads of the enemy. We crush, cramp and paralyze by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the fire of God go before us God and burn up all the enemies. We are not fighting against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. The host of wickedness. We cramp and paralyze by the blood of Jesus and we call forth our money we call for our goods. We call for our supply. We command money because money is our servant, but you are our God. And we call for money to serve us in the kingdom in the name of Jesus. We call for money to come from the 
north, the south, the east, and the west. Promotion, increase, witty ideas and vision, divine connection and partnerships and deals and royalties and benefits, special surprises and inheritance and favors upon your people right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray for open doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to things that are mutually beneficial. Hallelujah. And cause your favor to show up in uncommon places. Let their name be mentioned in the right ears among the right people that you want them to connect with for further advancement. In the name of Jesus. Come on somebody. Give God the praise right now. My God. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. So shake him, Give him the press. So shake my heart. Give him the press. Give him the press. Praise God. Now so as the Lord has laid in our heart. And those who are watching, we thank you for watching and connecting with us, taking the time out to connect with us online. And we know that God is blessing you just as much as he's blessing us as we walk by faith and not by sight. We are going to see greater manifestation of his power in our, li in our lives. This is not a time to look for doom and gloom. It's doom and gloom for the world. But for us who is in the world but are not of the world, God has better things planned for us. And and so we have reason to rejoice and be glad in the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he wants you to rejoice in him. And as Paul says, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. And in everything he said, give thanks for this is God's good pleasure for you. It's the will of the Lord that you give him thanks. Hallelujah. That you be thankful in all you're doing because he's working it together for your good. Praise God. You've been blessed today. Hallelujah. You've been blessed today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We just welcome those who have come here for the first time. I know some were here for the first time, like my sister there. First time. Second. Third. A long time. You know, see. First time. Praise God. Blessing somebody, giving them an increase in faith. Welcome. Praise God. And my family over there, sir. And my family, you know. <laughs> Praise God and my son. Yeah. You see, me have old past son, you know. Oh my God. Every day my wife have been marked them. Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. But I give God praise for them. I believe great things are happening in the kingdom of God. And this is the greatest family in the whole universe. The family of God. Amen. And I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. And I'm glad. To meet more people that are in the family and more that are coming in. Come on, somebody. That God has great things planned for. And we look with great expectation to see even greater things manifest in Jesus' name. What do you say? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to the Lord. Let me release you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you his peace. God bless you real good. Be strong in the Lord. The prophets might have a great week. Love you all. Praise God.